Welcome to Fiction Narratives. Chapter 231 Whoa! Upon seeing the Megatama in Steve's field of view, Fang Emma was immediately stunned, my luck today is unbelievable, isn't it? Although the dungeon reward box didn't yield the Book of Ages, getting a Megatama is already great. You should know, this bamboo mod has been loaded for quite a while, but I've never come across a single Megatama. What's more, this particular Megatama isn't just any kind. It's exactly the white static Megatama that Fang Emo currently desires the most. Haha. <laughs> now I can go to Jojo. Fang Emo suddenly beamed with joy, 16 seconds of time stop, I'll be damned if I don't snoop on Lisa. I mean, I'll be damned if I don't transport Dio Brando. With a mere thought, Fang Emo directly commanded Steve to take away the Megatama. After storing the Megatama, Steve continued mining, while Fang Emo checked his power generating devices. As it stands now, the mob farming conveyor belts are operating quite well, with no issues requiring repair. He looked around and found that these power generating devices are running in an orderly fashion. This time, when Fang Emo returned from the Bleach World, he brought back only the Sakura and Chain Mining mods. These two mods have little impact on the Minecraft world. After all, Sakura is pretty much a replica of bamboo, just with some additional recipes and decorative items. As for chain mining, it goes without saying, it's a purely functional mod, not even adding any items to the game. However, Fang Mo didn't have time to study how chain mining works and whether his real world body could also utilize its features. But let's not talk about whether Fang Mo's real body can use it for now. Steve is having a blast using it. The chain mining that Fang Emo unlocked is almost the same as when he used to play Minecraft. Besides ores, it can also affect gravel and obsidian. That's absolutely awesome. Fang Emo immediately had Steve go to the end to dig obsidian pillars. After digging up a few of these obsidian pillars, Fang Emo estimates that he won't lack for obsidian for a long time. All in all, after returning to the Minecraft world, Fang Emo and Steve have been bustling around for several days. Steve is basically mining, while Fang Emo is exploring the surroundings. In his spare time, he also has to study the guide for his bamboo and sakura mods. Currently, he only has a few mod guides on hand. So, of course, he has to study them carefully. After a brief study, Fang Emo also discovered the correct way to generate Megatama. Aside from dungeons, this mod also comes with another method to obtain Megatama. That is by defeating a boss. Something called the Villager Avenger. Fang Emo checked the guide and found that the summoning method is similar to that of the Wither, except you have to replace the Wither skulls with Villager heads. In the original Bamboo mod, the Villager head dot or the Villager block, can only be cut off with a Samurai sword. However, after becoming the Bamboo and Cherry family bucket, this limitation was removed, and you can also use Tinker's Construct weapons. So Fang Emo made a weapon specifically designed for killing wither skeletons, called Villagers Must Die. It has the feature of Beheading X, combined with Molten Gold's Loot Duplication and Earth Mother Alloy Slaughter features. With one swing, the Villager lost four heads, as if both its circle head and cross head had been chopped off, extremely brutal, akin to a treasure for Louis XVI. He placed the Villager block on Soul Sand, and soon the Villager Avenger appeared. Its modeling was very casual just an ordinary villager's appearance with a pair of semi-transparent ender dragon wings attached to its back. Once summoned, it began to throw villager heads wildly. But even as an avenger, it was still just a villager in the end. Steve casually threw a few darts, and it exploded on the spot. After the villager avenger died, it let out a scream, and its drops scattered all over the ground. Fang Emo had Steve go and sift through the loot, finding over 10 emeralds, a nether star, and a black purple Megatama. Oh, is it a black hole Megatama this time? Seeing the Megatama on the ground, Fang Emo nodded in satisfaction. The rest was simple. Fang Emo felt no guilt about slaying villagers, so he started farming right away. After roughly half a day, Fang Emo had already obtained all the Megatama in this mod. Red Explosion Megatama, Black Purple Black Hole Megatama, White Time Stop Megatama, Blue Storm Megatama, Green Drop Protection Megatama, Pink Healing Megatama, and Orange Projectile Protection Megatama. However, apart from these Megatamas,
Fang Mo also obtained a strange pickaxe from the villagers of Enger. It's a pickaxe called Fang Mo hadn't delved much into the bamboo mod before, so he didn't know what this thing was for and immediately flipped through the instruction manual on the spot. After reading the manual, Fang Mo more or less understood the function of this item. It's a pickaxe similar to Tinker's construct, which can be upgraded infinitely. In addition to being dropped by the villagers of Enger, it can also be crafted using two nether stars, a dragon egg, a block of diamond, and a piece of bamboo. However, unlike Tinker's tools, each time this question mark pickaxe is upgraded, it gains a strange enchantment. Many of these enchantments have negative effects, such as a life-stealing effect that actually sucks the player's blood. Each time a block is mined, the pickaxe will absorb some of the player's health. The level of this enchantment can even be upgraded, resulting in even more of the player's blood being absorbed. Furthermore, this question mark pickaxe has infuriating effects like randomly teleporting the player, summoning monsters to attack the player, or eating the pickaxe via right click, which speeds up the player's hunger consumption. This is really infuriating. Fang Mo almost threw this thing into the lava when he read this part of the manual. However, when Fang Mo continued reading patiently, he found that the pickaxe actually has positive enchantments too, such as fortune, and both positive and negative enchantments can accumulate as the pickaxe levels up. The maximum stacking level for enchantments seems to be 30. That's really ferocious. Because theoretically, this question mark pickaxe could even accumulate up to 30 levels of fortune. You have to understand, even the ultimate artifact of Avaricia, the World Breaker pickaxe, at most only has a level 10 fortune effect when its range digging ability is not considered. The limit of this strange thing is actually three times that of the World Breaker pickaxe. Of course, if it were just this, Fang Emma wouldn't be so excited. But the most important point is. He already has a disenchantment table now. Chapter 232, Jojo. In order to study the question mark pickaxe, Fang Mo spent more than 10 days. But this time, his luck was really bad. The pickaxe had been wildly used by Steve and was already over level 40. However, it didn't have any useful enchantments, only a bunch of useless ones. Or to put it another way. These were all negative enchantments. Just the life drain attribute alone made Fang Mo dismantle 7 books. You should know. This is not traditional life drain, but rather losing your own health while using the tool. Additionally, there were enchantments like demon summoning, accelerated consumption, warp time space, and raw eating that Fang Mo also dismantled from the question mark pickaxe. For several consecutive days, he didn't get any enchantments he wanted. Fang Mo was also somewhat unhappy. So, he simply threw this crappy question mark pickaxe into a box and turned to study other things such as the Tinker's Construct mod. Fang Mo had previously made three artifacts in the MC world. These were the Demon Sword Leavitin, the Storm Dominator Battle Axe, and the most awesome, the Superposed State Great Sword. Actually, Fang Mo wanted to take out the Superposed State Great Sword to play with it back when he was in the Bleach world. But after materializing a Bedrock Golem, he realized the sword could still be enhanced. The reason Leavitin is so strong is partly because of the fire giant Surtur. In order to make the superposed state greatsword also possess apocalyptic power like Leavitin, Fang Mo plans to stuff the bedrock golem into it to serve as the power core. As everyone knows, once MC items are materialized, they cannot be taken back to the MC world. For this reason, Fang Mo didn't use the superposed state greatsword to cut people in the death god world. He wanted to reforge it and seal the bedrock golem inside. In the original Tinker's Construct, tools cannot be disassembled. But Fang Mo installed a Tinker's Construct expansion, which includes a Tinker's Smasher that can return some of the original materials in fragment form. The whole process is complicated, so it won't be mentioned here. In any case, this time Fang Mo used cosmic neutrons and dull gold to forge the blade, still used zero element for the core, and used shattered bedrock for the handle. He abandoned the sunshine alloy and instead engraved the spatial resonance power of ender metal into the weapon. However, it's worth mentioning. Because he had a Megatama, Fang Mo also embedded a black hole Megatama into the superposed state great sword. Of course, he didn't forget his storm battle axe either, 
directly embedding a thunderstorm Megatama onto it. In addition, he also researched other weapons like the Hot Spring Sword, the Villager Discount Sword, and the Time Stop Sword. Since it was just a test, he didn't use any precious materials and casually made a few weapons, then experimented with them in the Minecraft world. The Hot Spring Sword had the same effects as the Bamboo Mod's Hot Spring Machine. However, after enhancing the weapon with redstone, he mysteriously gained an urgency buff when soaking in water. As for the Villager Discount Sword, its function was indeed as described. What was funny was that when he stuck the Villager Sword into the ground, it didn't turn into a shop, but rather a half bodiless villager phantom appeared above the sword, like a soul. Right-clicking this villager soul opened an operation page. Goodness, what kind of bounce spirit. He couldn't help but comment. Due to his emerald factory, he had raised quite a few villagers, and occasionally killing dozens of them wasn't a big deal. After killing many villagers, he found that they actually started offering him discounts. A few pieces of coal, a few sheets of paper, or a few chunks of meat could be exchanged for an emerald, and so on. As soon as Steve drew his knife, these businessmen immediately became good citizens. This delighted him immensely. He never thought that these leeches would also have a day of fear. So he immediately used materials like emeralds, luxury alloys, gold, and cherry-colored diamonds to make a giant sword. After enhancing and enchanting it with various things, he named it the White Jade Wave God Sword. Its oil-removing effect was absolutely amazing. He even strengthened the sword with two enhancements, a drawer and bamboo shoots. After killing villagers, he could plant a bamboo shoot right on the spot, reducing the carbon emissions from the villagers' breathing. The corpses could also nourish the bamboo, contributing to nature. The drawer enhancement could be used to store the villagers' remains, which meant raw villager meat. It's quite peculiar, but he really liked it. He originally planned to enter the Jojo world sooner. But because tormenting villagers was just too satisfying, he ended up delaying for half a month. However, in that half month, his gains were huge. He not only created several artifacts, but also harvested a large number of essence berries. He even discovered a hidden function of the villager sword, which was that it could be used as a supervisor. All you have to do is create a villager sword and stick it in front of a mob farm. This thing is equivalent to the player going AFK, all kinds of power generating devices will operate in an orderly manner. Thanks to this, Fang Mo has already farmed enough gold, iron, and coal. So, he directly brought a lot of resources, preparing to expand the beacon pyramid within himself. This thing is really useful. After all, Fang Mo doesn't want to chug potions before every fight. Those who know will understand that he's applying buffs, those who don't might think he's addicted. Anyway, after being delayed for nearly half a month, Fang Mo has finally packed all sorts of things and is ready to move on to the next world. That is, Jojo's bizarre adventure. Actually, compared to Bleach, Fang Mo prefers to go to Jojo. It's not that he doesn't like Bleach, in its heyday, its coolness and fashion value were off the charts, far exceeding anything nearby. But how should I put it Bleach is, after all, a shounen anime. Few characters die, and it doesn't leave the audience unsettled or anything. But when you look at Jojo, even the main characters get wiped out. Araki, you're really daring to write this. Did you learn your knife throwing technique from Dio this time Fang Mo is going mainly to research the stand arrows and the stone masks. Other than that. It's probably about erasing those regrets. Although the charm of Jojo lies in its flesh and blood characters, their courage, dedication, and sacrifice, Fang Mo says he is just a casual person, not a great benefactor. He saves others purely because he wants to, not because the person doesn't want to die. I hope I start off in jail with Jotaro. Fang Mo quietly prayed, and then had Steve open the Book of Ages. Endless black fog poured out, swallowing both Fang Mo and Steve, accompanied by familiar weightlessness and darkness. Soon, everything returned to normal. Before Fang Mo could come to his senses, he felt something cold hit him. Opening his eyes, what he saw was a muddy valley. The sky was a deep black, mixed with the sound of rumbling thunder in the torrential rain. Since the system usually throws him near major events, Fang Mo started looking around as soon as he saw this valley. And upon doing so, Fang Mo really did see a carriage not far away. Certainly, 
this carriage has already flipped over. It's likely due to the slippery road from the rain, causing it to tumble down from the mountain path. Even the horse has been killed, its blood washed everywhere by the rainwater. This seems familiar somehow. Seeing this scene, Fang Ammo suddenly had an ominous premonition for some reason. Just as if to confirm his suspicion, before he could go over to investigate further, a distasteful laughter suddenly came from behind the carriage. Ha ha ha. Look, a car accident. Accompanying this sound, a sleazy figure began to circle the carriage, the horse's leg must have got stuck in the mud, causing the carriage to fall off the cliff, ha <laughs> how tragic, tsk tsk, these guys died on the spot. However, this figure was quickly drawn to the bodies on the ground. These are indeed nobles. After seeing the corpse's clothes and the exquisite rings on their hands, this person's eyes lit up, emitting a lecherous laugh, you're dressed so well, but now it's all mine, he <laughs> he. But at that moment, a woman suddenly shouted at him, Sir, there is a child still alive in the carriage. A child? The sleazy man didn't even look at her, selfishly taking off the rings from the corpse's hands, muttering, You fool, why bother with useless things? What? What are you doing? The woman looked at her man in a bit of shock, only to be met with a harsh scolding, Nonsense, of course, I'm taking the valuable things. The man's face gradually revealed a hideous expression, but he quickly noticed a box nearby, hum what is this? However, at that very moment, suddenly footsteps could be heard from not far away. Hearing the footsteps, the man was also startled, instinctively looking towards the direction of the sound. And upon looking, he saw a strange man. The man was strolling in the torrential rain, but strangely not a drop of water was on him. With black pupils and black hair, the clothes he wore were also odd, clearly not a local. Who are you? Out of nervousness, the man couldn't help but shout. However, the other party didn't answer him, instead, they smiled at him, the things in this box must be good stuff. Aren't you going to open it and see? Upon hearing this, the man was stunned for a moment. But then he quickly realized, Perhaps the other party had also seen the carriage fall off the cliff and intended to come over and get a share. They must be birds of a feather. Humph, I found this box first. The man quickly understood all this, his eyes slyly darting around as he hurriedly began to declare sovereignty, everything here is mine, especially this box, understand. Don't worry, I have no intention of taking it from you. Fang Emmo smiled, I'm just curious about what's inside. Do you really take me for a fool upon hearing this, the man also snorted, but despite saying so, he was equally curious about what was inside the box. So he reached out and opened it. The moment he opened a small gap, he saw the contents. It was a mask made of strange, ancient-looking stone, filled with cracks and bruises. What? What the hell is this? Upon seeing this dark and terrifying mask, the man instantly felt his hair stand on end, as if this thing were some sort of ominous object. Goosebumps erupted all over his body. This mask is really scary. The man nervously swallowed his saliva, feeling uncomfortable all over, it must be something cursed, I can't use this thing. As he was saying this, he hurriedly wanted to close the box. But just at that moment, a large hand suddenly pressed on his shoulder. Why close the box this is a good thing. Fang Emmo said to him while pressing on his shoulder, Laughing heartily, quick, take it. Your son can use it. Chapter 233 You What are you talking about? Hearing Fang Mo's words, the man across from him quickly shook off his arm. I don't have any children. Instead of saying that, we should be focusing on making more money. As he spoke, a sly glint flashed across the man's eyes. You must be very interested in this box, right? The man suddenly grinned as if he'd understood something, revealing a set of broken, yellow teeth. Fine, I'll give you this, but you have to help me out. These teeth should fetch a good price. Having said that, the man reached out to grab the person lying on the ground. Wait, the person isn't dead yet and you're already pulling out their teeth. Fang Emmo, witnessing this, couldn't help but comment. Did you ruin your teeth from chewing beetle nuts are you jealous of people with good teeth now? What he's not dead. Hearing Fang Mo's words, 
The man was also stunned. Um. He looked at the unconscious nobleman on the ground and remembered that he had just stolen the man's ring. What if the man woke up and caused him trouble as he thought about this, a dreadful idea crossed his mind. But before he could act, Fang Ammo suddenly patted him on the shoulder and said with a smile. Don't worry, he should be thanking us. As if to confirm Fang Mo's words, the corpse on the ground suddenly woke up at that moment and grabbed the man's arm. What? Caught off guard by the corpse, the man was clearly startled. His hand trembled, and he threw the box out. Due to the violent shaking, a stone mask fell out of the box. Before he could do anything, the corpse on the ground slowly opened his eyes. Is it? You who saved me the awakened nobleman looked up with difficulty at the man and then at Fang Emmo beside him, speaking in a weak and anxious tone. Where is my wife Mary are my wife and child? All right. Ah. Uh -uh. Seeing the noble suddenly wake up, the sly man was also taken aback. But before he could react, Fang Emmo, who was standing next to him, spoke up, it's quite sad to say, but your wife Mary has now become Bloody Mary. Of course, the coachman is the same, but your son is safe, don't worry. Ah. Yes, 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 please rest assured. Upon hearing this, the cunning man quickly nodded in agreement. Is she? Dead after hearing this unfortunate news, the nobleman was instantly filled with sorrow, tears streaming down his eyes as he choked up, is this also fate? However, he quickly composed himself. My surname is Joestar. You have saved my life, and I will repay you. After taking a deep breath, Joestar, holding back his sorrow, said to the two, while I am still clear-headed, could you tell me your names? Huh. Hearing Joestar's words, the cunning man was stunned. He subconsciously turned to look at Fang Emmo. As he had said, this nobleman really did regard him as a lifesaver and was foolishly thanking him, but... How did he know all this as for how Fang Emmo knew this that's obvious? If Joestar didn't play dumb under such circumstances, he would surely be killed to silence him, especially in this era where killing someone is all too common. Joestar, being a noble, isn't foolish, he can think this through. But just because Joestar and Fang Emmo could figure it out doesn't mean the cunning man could. They are not on the same wavelength, he just thinks the nobleman in front of him is easy to deceive. So he hurriedly introduced himself, I am called. Dario Brando, a commoner. Dario. Dario. Brando. Fang Emmo glanced at Dario Brando and couldn't help but comment, what kind of name is this, soup companion no wonder Dio is called Diao Soup, has the Brando family been naming failures for generations big material stewing Diao or something. Are you mocking me? Upon hearing this, Dario Brando was immediately displeased. However, before he could do anything, Fang Emmo suddenly smiled and stared at him. At that moment, Dario Brando felt a sudden chill. For some reason, the young man in front of him felt creepy. He has fought and brawled for decades, but has never encountered such a weird feeling before. The other person seemed like some sort of unknown creature wrapped in human skin. Just staring at him like this made him tremble uncontrollably all over, and his scalp tingled in waves. This indescribable fear was even hundreds of times worse than the feeling the mask had just given him. You. You. Dario Brando looked pale and couldn't even speak. However, at this moment, George Joestar saved him by directly asking Fang Emmo, Sir. May I ask how should I address you? Oh, you can call me Fang Emmo, Fang Emmo casually replied, but after a thought, he added, You can also call me Steve, a wizard. As Fang Emmo turned his head to look at George Joestar, the oppressive feeling disappeared instantly. Mr. Brando, Mr. Steve. George Joestar nodded, not caring that the other person claimed to be a wizard. In fact, in 1868 England, many people still believed in alchemy and astrology, so claiming to be a wizard was no big deal. So he said weakly, I George Joestar, will never forget your kindness. After saying that, he quickly passed out again. The atmosphere suddenly became silent. Dario Brando looked nervously at Fang Emmo, seemingly a little fearful of him. Fang Emmo, however, didn't care about him at all, because he was currently troubled by something else. Yes, he had indeed crossed over to the world of Jojo, 
and had just caught the first major event, that is, the crash involving George Joestar. This is the very first scene in all six parts of JoJo. It all started because George Joestar had an accident, and Brando discovered and wanted to steal his belongings. From this moment on, the blood destiny of the two families became entangled. As Fang Emma watched the scene before him, an uncontrollable thought emerged in his mind, the place where dreams begin. He had indeed come to the world of Jojo, but to be honest, it was a bit too early, it's currently 1868, which is even earlier than the timeline of the first X-Men battle. Why did it throw me near such a big event? Thinking of the current time point, Fang Mo also began to feel a headache, wouldn't it be better to throw me into Egypt or Morio Italy would work too. Now. I've become the ancestor of all stand users. This guy. Dario Brando looked at Fang Emo. This guy had been talking strangely to himself since the beginning. It's clearly raining, but he's not wet at all. All these illogical aspects were stimulating his nerves. Dario is just a low-level scum, and these illogical oddities really made him extra nervous. However, just as the two were lost in their own thoughts, under the rain's wash, much of the blood also flowed onto the stone mask. The mask suddenly began to vibrate restlessly, followed by a clicking sound. Numerous sharp, curved bone spikes suddenly protruded from the mask, making the whole mask instantly grim. It was obvious that if anyone put on this thing, their entire brain would likely be pierced in an instant. These bone spikes were curved and sharp, making the mask look as if it had come to life. What? Dario Brando was already on edge, and was startled by the suddenly activated stone mask. He couldn't help it, in this dark, rainy night, he had seen too many illogical and unusual things. Just standing there, this man named Steve made him shiver. In this context, the transformation of the mask was even more hair-raising. Now, Dario Brando just wanted to leave this place at all costs. But the problem was that George Joestar was still lying on the ground. In order to repay this nobleman's favor, he had no choice but to stay here for the time being and try to save someone. However, unlike Dario's fear, Fang Mo's face was full of a look of surprise at this moment. Because the moment the stone mask activated, a system prompt sound suddenly rang in his mind. System prompt, blood and life essence research completed. You have gained 50% new module download permission. Hmm. Hearing this system prompt, Fang Emo reacted instantly. If it was just about researching blood, Fang Emo might be a bit confused. But when it came to life essence, he couldn't afford not to understand. This is a magic module called blood magic. Although Fang Emo had not delved into it, he roughly knew what this module was about. Like its name, this module can turn blood into life essence, and then use it to make equipment or cast magic. The entry level is also very simple, just build an altar and then crazily bleed. After all, it's a module for collecting fresh blood. It seemed quite reasonable to use the stone mask to unlock it. But the problem was that the stone mask only unlocked 50% of the module's permissions, which was a bit of a headache. Who knows where to unlock the other 50% of the module's permissions? Could it be done by crazily draining vampires or find the perfect stone mask embedded with ether redstone? Forget it, let's talk about it later. Shaking his head, Fang Emo temporarily set aside this thought and turned his attention to George Joestar in front of him. In any case, saving people is the most important thing right now. Otherwise, it would be laughable if this guy died, the whole JoJo hasn't even started yet and it's already coming to an end. Chapter 234 Looking at the unconscious George Joestar in front of him, Fang Emo also felt a headache. Did he arrive too early although he also knew the temperament of the Book of Ages, he honestly didn't want to accelerate time using shit escape every time. Is this trying to force him to become the number one poop fiend across all realms at this current time point, Fang Emo really couldn't think of where to stir things up. After all, his understanding of Jojo is limited to the anime, and he has never read the original work by Rocky. Through the whole Jojo series, what he remembered were mainly the stone masks and the pillar men, the stand arrows, and stands and such. However, Fang Emo only vaguely remembered that the pillar men were dug up near Mexico, and the stand arrows were dug up by Diavolo in Egypt, but he had no idea where these things specifically are. Diavolo dug up the stand arrows in 1986. 
However, the current time point is 1868, which is more than a hundred years too early, isn't it? Although Fang Ammo had become ageless after datafication of his body, that doesn't mean he wants to dig graves in Egypt for a hundred years. My head hurts. Fang Ammo wiped his face, then looked up at the overcast sky. Tisk, let's at least stop the rain first. Saying this, he waved his hand towards the sky, activating the vulcanite amulet within him. A red energy ball instantly flew from his palm towards the clouds. Within a few seconds, the torrential rain came to an abrupt stop. Even the dark clouds were dispersed, and the bright moonlight shone down, illuminating everything in front of him. However, since Fang Emma wasn't carrying Dario Brando on his back, Dario also saw this scene. This completely violated his understanding. Could the other party really change the weather with a wave of their hand this definitely isn't something a human can do, right this guy is certainly not an ordinary human. Thinking of all the strange signs before, Dario was directly scared and sat on the ground. Dot Demon. Dario struggled to move backward, looking so scared that even his face twisted. Hey, hey, isn't your courage a little too small? Seeing Dario's tearful state, Fang Emmo couldn't help but say, as a mage, isn't it normal for me to know some magic? Dot Demon. Dario simply couldn't listen to any of this, his body shaking like a sieve. In fact, he has always been such a person. As the scum at the bottom of the social ladder, greed and cunning have become his nature, deeply ingrained in his bones. He only dares to bully those weaker than himself, but when he encounters someone like Fang Emmo, who is beyond his imagination, he becomes too frightened to speak. But who exactly is Fang Emmo upon seeing this scene, he immediately came up with a solution. Come, take this, Fang Emmo said with a smile, pulling out a palm-sized piece of gold from his pocket and casually throwing it at the other person's feet. Don't be afraid, it's just a gift for our meeting. What? Huh? Dario, initially full of fear, froze upon seeing the gold. Almost instinctively, he reached out to grab the gold in front of him. The heavy feeling of the gold instantly delighted him. This is actually real gold and such a big piece, too. Enough to buy him a lifetime's worth of drinks, right for some reason, Dario suddenly felt that Fang Emma wasn't that terrifying. Is this? For me Dario held the gold and asked with uncertainty. Use it to buy drinks, Fang Emma said, waving his hand dismissively. Why Dario's face tensed up. Holding the gold tightly, as if reluctant to let go, he hesitated to ask, such a large piece of gold must be very valuable, right? To me, it's just trash, Fang Emmo said. I told you I'm a mage, didn't I? Isn't it normal for a mage to dabble in alchemy? Alchemy. Greed and infatuation flashed in Dario's eyes, but he quickly suppressed it and put on a flattering smile. Thank you, Master Mage. Thank you, Master Mage. All right, go save people now. Fang Emma waved his hand, clearly not a fan of people like Dario. First, go find the local sheriff and tell him that a noble is in trouble. Ask him to bring people over. Okay, all right. Driven by self-interest, Dario felt not a trace of fear and excitedly took off running, not caring that mud splashed all over him. Soon enough, he came back with a few sheriffs. The man leading them seemed to know George Joestar and was quite surprised to see him in trouble. He quickly ordered people to start the rescue, first taking the living back for treatment, and then having the remaining few deal with the wreckage here. Because they were nobles, even the dead bodies and wreckage had to be sent back somehow. Fang Emmo, seeing this, happily followed. Using his eloquence, he quickly deceived. And learned the address of the Joestar family residence, the Joestar mansion. He did not bother with the crowd. Fang Emma walked slowly toward the Joestar estate on his own. Then, not far from the estate, on a mountain, Fang Emma set down the geokist. As soon as he opened the door, a villa created by Stark appeared on the spot. Fang Emma had chosen a great location, right on a cliffside. The building stood alone here, immediately giving off a magical vibe. Unfortunately, Stark's building was too modern. If it had been more medieval in style, Fang Emmo might have started setting up his alchemy pot right away. He waited here for a few days. Soon enough, George Joestar came to visit. It had to be said that he was indeed a good man, 
even though he was still injured, he came to express his gratitude. Unlike traditional nobles rotten to the core, Jostar was honest and kind-hearted, which is why he was able to raise his first-generation Jojo, Jonathan Jostar, to be a gentleman as well. There were some criticisms, of course. But Fang Emo still greatly admired him. For that reason, Fang Emo kindly invited him in for a chat, however, Jostar was a 19th century noble, and he couldn't understand the various modern technologies in the villa. Not to mention holographic technology, even LED lights left him stunned. He dared not drink cola, as it was continuously bubbling. And when he saw Fang Mo's pet, a small ender dragon, the last bit of doubt in his heart was shattered. It seemed that the man before him was indeed a mage. Originally, due to the impact of industrialization, many people in the 19th century had stopped believing in alchemy and mages. Jostar was no exception, he had never seen a mage in most of his life. Influenced by external factors, it was normal for him not to believe in such things. However, after seeing a dragon, a legendary creature, he had no choice but to believe. I never thought that the one who saved me would be an esteemed mage. Jostar had an expression of astonishment on his face, I'm ashamed to say that I was naive enough to think that mages didn't exist and were just something people made up. You're right. After hearing Jostar's statement, Fang Emo also nodded, mages don't actually exist. Huh. Jostar was taken aback, but Mr. Steve, you. Actually, my initial exposure was to law. Becoming a mage was more of an accident, and at most, it's a side job for me because my main occupation is as a doctor. Fang Emo said, it's just that I like to combine my main job with my side job, that is, combining being a mage and a doctor, or magical doctor for short. After hearing this, Jostar was stunned for a moment before finally giving a dry laugh, haha. Mr. Steve, you really have a sense of humor. No, I'm serious. Fang Emo spoke directly, my medical skills are top-notch in the entire divine medical universe. Apart from not being able to revive the dead, things like organ transplants, limb regeneration, etc. are trivial to me. I have a friend named Stark who almost died from heavy metals, and I replaced his organs three times. Didn't he still get saved? Mr. Steve, I think you might have a misunderstanding about medicine. Joe Stark couldn't help but rub his forehead and remind, such as the situations you mentioned. I think they already fall into the realm of magic. Nonsense. Fang Emma waved his hand dismissively, are you a mage do you understand magic magic is for taking your life, medical skills are for real healing. As he said this, Fang Emma took out a mystical blade from his bosom, if you don't believe me, I can demonstrate the mystic death curse for you right now. Its current fatality rate is 100%. No, no, no. Joe Star quickly waved his hands, Mr. Steve, I think you're right. That's more like it. Only then did Fang Emo satisfiedly put away the mystical blade. And just after Fang Emo had put away the blade, Joe Star said to him solemnly, Anyway, no matter what, Mr. Steve, I am very grateful for your life-saving grace. From this building and the magical methods you have shown, your needs and Mr. Dario's are probably not the same. I wouldn't dare to decide anything for you, but if you need the Joe Star family's help in the future, please feel free to ask. I'll do my best to assist. Saying this, Joe Star stood up from the sofa. He deeply bowed to Fang Emo. Oh, I see. Upon hearing Joe Star's statement, Fang Emo also nodded, and then suddenly, as if remembering something, he said with a smile, Speaking of help, I do indeed have a favor to ask. Please go ahead. Joe Star immediately said. The principle of alchemy is equivalent exchange. Although I've gained great power, I've paid the price of losing the ability to have offspring, so. Fang Emo said with a smile. Why don't you let your son Jonathan recognize me as his godfather? Chapter 235 Why not? Let your son Jonathan acknowledge me as his godfather Fang Emo smiled and said, I've wanted a son for a long time. When he grows up, I can teach him magic. Is that so? Hearing Fang Mo's words, Jostar was taken aback at first, but then he quickly understood. Unlike the kingdom where Fang Emo comes from, the term godfather is relatively rare in Europe. After all, 
it's strange to suddenly have a foster father when the biological father is alive. However, Joestar is a nobleman, so he quickly understood Fang Mo's intentions. It's clear that what Fang Mo is suggesting has nothing to do with adoption. Instead, this is more like taking on an apprentice, or something similar to acknowledging someone as a godfather. Being European, Joestar is quite familiar with the concept of godfathers. Since Fang Mo saved his life and he himself is unable to have offspring, he naturally couldn't refuse Fang Mo's request to be Jonathan's godfather. I understand, Mr. Steve. Joestar nodded, then. The baptism of Jonathan will be left to you. Don't worry. Fang Mo made an okay gesture with his hand, then confidently patted his chest, I will make sure everything is clearly arranged for you. Watching Fang Mo's actions, Joestar felt an inexplicable sense of foreboding for some reason. But before he could say anything, Fang Mo spoke up. He looked thoughtful as he stroked his chin, sizing Joestar up, By the way, Mr. Joestar, I have a question for you. Hmm. Joestar asked curiously, What is it? Do you? Fang Mo looked at Joestar and asked curiously, Believe in fate? Fate. Upon hearing these two words, Joestar suddenly froze. He had originally thought that Fang Mo would ask him something else, about the business of nobility, his own experiences, or something about his son Jonathan. However, the other party had thrown out such a strange question. After a long silence, Joestar finally spoke slowly. Mr. Steve, I believe that fate does exist. Although we can't see it, it's affecting us all the time. We are all slaves to destiny. If my wife Mary hadn't bought that strange ancient mask, then she and I wouldn't have wasted time and happened to encounter that storm on the way back. You could say that it was because of that antique mask that indirectly led to her death. This is fate. From the moment she saw that mask in the antique shop, everything that followed had already been set in motion, including my encounter with you and Mr. Dario. All of this is predestined by fate. Having said this, Joestar quietly closed his eyes and sighed, We think we are defying fate, but we don't realize that this is also a part of destiny. Hmm. After hearing Joestar's words, Fang Mo also nodded, Is that what you think? This is just my personal humble opinion. Joestar said. What if fate insists on killing you? Fang Mo asked again, Would you reject this arrangement of fate or? Accept it willingly. I think I wouldn't fear death. Joestar pondered for a moment and then said seriously, Death is not frightening, what is truly terrifying is a meaningless death. As a gentleman of the Joestar family, I hope I can die a meaningful death. If that's the case, then I will gladly accept the arrangement of fate. Your answer is really quite admirable. Fang Mo unexpectedly glanced at George Joestar. It must be said that the Joestar family's awareness was really high, leaving Fang Mo unsure how to continue the conversation. In the not-so-distant future, Dario Brando's child, a villain named Dio, would try to seize the Joestar family's wealth. And just when the other party wanted to kill Jonathan, George Joestar suddenly stood in the way of the sword, sacrificing his life to save his own child, dying in his son's arms. Fang Emma was indeed thinking of saving this kind gentleman. After hearing the other party's statement, Fang Emma also felt somewhat at a loss for words. Should he wait for the day Dio takes action and then step in to save him or should he just silently watch as the other sacrifices himself, passing on his golden spirit to his son Jonathan Mr. Steve, have you seen my fate Joestar is kind but not foolish. After their previous exchanges, he has already responded. After all, Fang Mo had already claimed to be a mage, so using astrology to predict the future seemed quite normal. More or less. Fang Mo nodded. He didn't mind spoilers and directly asked, Do you want to know? No need to say more about other aspects. Joestar thought for a moment, but finally couldn't help asking, But could you please tell me when I will die? Probably. After your son comes of age. Fang Mo stroked his chin. He couldn't remember the specific time, but it was clear that both Dio and Jonathan were already adults when they clashed, You will die in your son's arms. Is that so? Upon hearing this, Joestar seemed to breathe a sigh of relief, that is. Enough. As long as Jonathan grows up, I have nothing more to worry about. After saying this, Joestar stood up from the sofa. 
It's getting late, Mr. Steve. Joe Star bowed to Fang Mo and then said, I should also take my leave. Our conversation today has been greatly beneficial. I will cherish each day going forward. After saying this, Joe Star turned and walked away. As Fang Mo watched Joe Star's retreating figure, he pondered for a moment and then spoke up, Actually, I could save you. No need, Mr. Steve. When George Joe Star heard this, his steps paused momentarily, but he quickly continued walking towards the door. The Joe Star family has been gentlemen for generations, and I am no different. A true gentleman does not fear death. After saying this, George Joe Star pushed the door open and left. Fang Ammo did not speak, simply watching the direction George Joe Star had gone. To be honest, he felt somewhat conflicted. Long ago in the Marvel world, he had forcefully saved Thor's mother, Queen Frigga of Asgard. She had been willing to accept her fate and go to her death, but Fang Ammo had saved her nonetheless. Because to Fang Ammo, Frigga's death was a regret. After watching the whole movie, he had been filled with a strong impulse, feeling that she shouldn't have died like that. But George Joestar was different. His death was not a regret, but rather a kind of sublimation. Because he had willingly chosen to die, he had forged the golden spirit of the first generation Jojo, his son Jonathan Joestar, granting him unparalleled courage and a heart full of determination and compassion. Fang Emma was a bit conflicted. The man had achieved greatness through his own death. Fang Emo didn't find this regrettable, on the contrary, he even admired him a bit. Theoretically, because he admired him, he should let him go to meet his death, but for some reason, it felt a bit wrong. Perhaps because of his charismatic personality, he also didn't want him to die. This is really vexing. Hmm. Fang Emo rubbed his temples, but then suddenly paused and began to laugh. Damn, is this the charm of Jojo? Shaking his head, Fang Emo stopped thinking about George Joestar. The man still had at least two decades left to live, worrying about it now was indeed too early. Rather than sit here and ponder this, he'd better focus on studying his MC items. After all, he had brought back a lot of interesting things this time. Chapter 236 As the thought flickered through his mind, Fang Emo had already summoned his stand, Steve. Steve rummaged through his backpack and quickly pulled out several weapons, handing them over to Fang Emo one by one. Without hesitation, Fang Emo activated his ability to materialize. Soon enough, an exquisite Azure Western sword appeared in his hand. This was a container specially crafted by Fang Emo for the Snow Queen. Considering that his own weapon forms were too monotonous, Fang Emo opted for a Western sword capable of breaking defenses instead of a broad blade great sword. The hilt of the sword was made of ultra-cold metal called hose, and the guard was chosen to be Tanzanite. As for the blade, Fang Emo used a nearly perfect material. It was on the same level as cosmic neutron ingots in the Avarisha mod, another material called the crystal matrix ingot. Cosmic neutron ingots represented physics and science. Weapons made of this neutron degenerate matter have such strong power that they can crush any known substance in the world. No matter how sturdy the chemical structure, it is fragile in the face of strong interactions, and everything will eventually turn into atomic dust and vanish between stars. As for the crystal matrix ingot, it represented magic and mysticism. Relying on his vague past memories, Fang Emo spent a long time testing this in the MC world before successfully crafting it. First, he placed five diamonds in an X shape on the workbench, creating an item called a diamond lattice. Then he placed the diamond lattices on both sides of the workbench and placed two nether stars in the center. Using the power of the nether for catalysis, the nether stars fused with the diamond lattice to form a special crystalline ingot. The interior of this ingot displayed a stable and complex matrix form. This intricate crystalline matrix structure allows it to carry astronomical levels of energy. In fact, the crystal matrix ingot is the ultimate material in Avaricia, one of the base synthesis materials for infinity ingots. Of course, the cosmic neutron ingot is the same. Physics and science, magic, and mysticism, along with the catalyst of everything in the world, enable the player to finally touch the infinite power of the universe. The crystal matrix ingot inherently possesses three characteristics, crystallinity, aftershock, and greed. Add in the ultra-cold of hose metal, the frost of tanzanite, the ender resonance engraved into the blade, 
and various types of tinkers enhancements, original enchantments, etc. Without a doubt, Fang Mo crafted another artifact. Reaching casually into his trousers, Fang Mo directly pulled out the Snow Queen's great sword. Revive, my love. Ah, no, bad luck. Fang Mo swung the great sword in his hand and directly said, Come out, my little maid. As soon as the words fell, a white chill began to spread. The girl like Ashwe cutely crawled out from the cold mist. Who master, Ashwe let out a cold breath, then looked around, are we already in another world? Yes, this time it's the world of Joe upward arrow Joe downward arrow. Fang Emo deliberately spoke in Jojo's tone, but as far as I can see now. I came too early again, so I can only study something else to distract myself. Saying this, Fang Emo directly raised the western sword in his hand, come, try this. What is this? The Snow Queen looked at the western sword in front of her. Alien flame needle, Fang Emo made a few stabbing motions with the western sword in his hand. A layer of mist resembling flames rose from the sword. It looked like it was burning, but it emitted a surprising chill, identified as pure fake fire. The Snow Queen looked somewhat speechless at her own master. Although she has lived in the MC for a long time, she has not spent more than five days in the real world. To be honest, she hasn't even had time to grasp some basic knowledge. Asking her to take over now is really too much to ask. Although Ashwe is indeed very hardworking, she still can't keep up with Fang Mo's pace. Hum don't understand. Fang Mo glanced at Ashwe and nodded, it's okay, it is indeed a bit difficult for you at the moment. Just try this for now. I'm sorry, master. I will study hard. Ashwe pouted her lips and then reached out to touch the western sword. The western sword crafted by Fang Mo is very traditional, the whole blade is like a stick without an edge, so Ashwe's little hand didn't get hurt when she grasped it. Ashwe gradually transformed into a wisp of cold air and disappeared into the western sword. After absorbing the Snow Queen, the western sword in Fang Mo's hand also underwent a new change. The blade, originally made of crystal matrix ingots, began to emit a glacial blue glow, and its entire structure changed into something between energy and matter. It's somewhat like the lightsabers in Star Wars, but it's longer and sharper. Fang Mo tried swinging it a few times and found that it was no longer a purely crystalline structure, it even had a certain toughness and malleability, capable of fiercely whipping the enemy like a hard rubber stick. Fang Mo gently thrust forward. The sword tip shimmered, cold air surged, and a few ice flowers appeared in mid-air. Because he was in his own villa, Fang Mo didn't dare to test abilities like the Ice Heaven Hundred Flowers Burial, but it was clear that the sword was much stronger than the previous end sword. Even the magical power of the Snow Queen had been greatly enhanced. Even without using the Ring of Arcana. This sword also possessed terrifying power that could freeze thousands of miles. In any case, there's no doubt that this weapon is stronger than that high Rentataru or whatever. Next time when going to the world of Bleach, he could have some fun with Hitsugaya Taushiro. He heard that Hitsugaya's abilities had improved during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, so it would be a good opportunity to practice on him. Hmm. What should this sword be called? Fang Emo glanced at the western sword in his hand and pondered for a moment, Frostmourne Tisk. I feel like that's not quite right. What if I get transported to World of Warcraft in the future? Flame Demon Sword. Ice Demon Sword. After thinking about it, a name suddenly popped into Fang Mo's mind, Ice Demon Sword. Rahab. The name Rahab originates from medieval church legends, said to be an ancient monster lurking in the primordial chaotic sea, representing the abyss of darkness and chaos. It is also mentioned in the Bible, but it's most famous for being a weapon in a game called Castlevania, featured throughout its various installments. After settling on this weapon's name, Fang Mo then materialized other weapons such as the Storm Battle Axe, Simplified Great Sword, Hot Spring Dagger, Villager Sword, and so on. Other weapons were fine, materializing them didn't cause any issues. But this Simplified Great Sword was the exception. Honestly, even Fang Mo himself didn't dare to test this thing at home. So he took advantage of the cover of night to leave the villa, flying and teleporting through the sky. He had no idea how far he had traveled before he finally completed the materialization test for the Simplified Great Sword in a forest. 
It was just as Fang Ammo had imagined. The moment the materialization's white light flashed, a completely black giant sword appeared in front of Fang Ammo. But before he could react, the sword instantly sank into the ground and disappeared. The ground, made of rock and soil, behaved as if it were water in front of the sword. It sank so silently that not even a ripple was raised. Holy crap, no. Seeing this, Fang Ammo immediately activated his gravitational field, trying to pull the giant sword back. By now, the strength of Fang Mo's gravitational field had grown immensely, even capable of conjuring multiple meteors effortlessly. However, against this sword, it was as ineffective as a fart. Fang Ammo couldn't pull the sword out. Instead, he himself was pulled underground due to the gravitational field. Upon seeing the situation, Fang Ammo quickly abandoned the use of the gravitational field, flew out from the ground, and opened his five fingers to aim at the pit on the ground. He tentatively shouted, Come back. The moment he finished speaking, the simplified great sword, which was sinking rapidly deep into the earth, suddenly paused. It then began to fly back up at an even faster speed, turning everything in its path into dust. A few seconds later, a dark flash passed by, and the handle of the simplified great sword instantly fell into Fang Mo's hands. Seeing this, Fang Mo immediately activated his void ring. A purple black light flashed, and he forcefully severed the gravitational connection between it and the planet. Damn. Seeing the heavy sword in his hand that was comparable to a star, Fang Ammo couldn't help but exclaim, Enchantment is still more powerful. Yes, it wasn't Fang Ammo who summoned the sword back. It was the enchantment named Loyalty that was engraved on the sword. As is well known, the Loyalty enchantment in the game can only be attached to a trident, and its effect is that the trident will fly back to the player after being thrown. Like other enchantments, even if Fang Ammo materialized the weapon, the loyalty enchantment would still be retained. However, the loyalty enchantment in the real world is not as rigid as it is in the game. Instead, it's more flexible, similar to Thor and his hammer in Thor 4, where it's not hard to see that Thor's hammer and Stormbreaker actually have some degree of self-awareness. After enchanting the weapon with loyalty, the weapon will also have a bit of intelligence. Of course, calling it AI wouldn't be wrong either. After the heavy sword flew back into his hands, Fang Ammo also tried to swing the sword, but unfortunately, the mass of the sword was too enormous. As mentioned before, the mass of the sword is 25,630,000,000 tons, swinging this sword is akin to swinging 25,000 space aircraft carriers at the same time. Even though Fang Ammo had enchanted this sword with various redstone enhancements and efficiency enchantments to make it lighter for him, he still couldn't manage to do it. After severing the gravitational connection with the planet, he could lift the sword. If he slowly accelerated, swinging the sword wasn't out of the question, but using it in actual combat would be wishful thinking. Damn, what should I do? Fang Ammo looked at the dark giant sword in his hand and began to have a headache, is it too late for me to go find a master and learn sword control techniques? Chapter 237 Looking at the simply heavy sword in his hand, Fang Ammo also felt a bit of a headache, having no idea how to solve this problem. In fact, with the enchantment of loyalty, he could still use the sword. For example, he could simply leave the sword in place, teleport behind the enemy, and then summon the sword to fly over. Given the ridiculous weight of the simply heavy sword, just this move alone would be enough to kill most enemies instantly. But isn't this too stupid it's as foolish as lying naked on the grass, pretending to fly a plane toward the sky, only to be hit by a frozen column of urine dropped from a passing airplane. Unless absolutely necessary, Fang Ammo would never use such a tactic. Forget it, I'll figure it out later. Shaking his head, Fang Ammo gave up on the idea of using this sword. His current strength is not enough to wield it, so he might as well just stash it away. With that thought, Fang Ammo directly took out the end sword that sealed the bedrock golem, released the internal bedrock golem, and while it was still unresponsive, he thrust the simply heavy sword forward and reseled it into the sword. After sealing the bedrock golem, the appearance of the simply heavy sword in Fang Mo's hand also changed. The sharp blade became blunt, and the body of the sword turned into a material that was between metal and rock. The whole sword had no fancy or complicated decorations and looked very simple and heavy. Moreover, 
under the influence of the bedrock golem's power, this sword became even heavier. This further confirmed Fang Mo's idea of stashing it away. Anyway, he has no expectations for this sword now. Maybe he can reuse it when he can beat Xian's much later. However, just as Fang Mo was about to put the sword away, he suddenly noticed the purple black gemstone embedded in the sword's hilt. Hmm. After seeing this Megatama, Fang Mo suddenly realized that when he originally crafted this sword, he seemed to have embedded a black hole Megatama in it as an enhancement. Black hole Megatama. Fang Mo glanced at the dark purple Megatama, a thoughtful expression appearing on his face, could this thing actually generate a real black hole? If it can't be wielded as a weapon, then simply turn it into a large-scale destructive weapon. Thinking of this, Fang Mo decided to give it a try. He focused his thoughts on the Great Sword and activated the Black Hole Megatama. The next second, the condensed Great Sword in his hand suddenly trembled, and a pitch black sphere appeared out of nowhere from the blade, releasing a sudden, enormous suction force. Surrounding trees, rocks, and even the air and light, everything was being devoured by it. Purple black arcs of electricity roamed on its surface, and everything within hundreds, even close to a thousand meters, couldn't escape its gravitational pull continuously flying over before being disintegrated, shattered, and ultimately devoured completely. As time passed, the volume of the black sphere began to slowly expand. However, facing this terrifying suction force like a man-made black hole, Fang Mo didn't show the slightest tension, instead, a surprised expression appeared on his face. Because he suddenly had a strange feeling. Fang Mo looked at the black sphere in front of him and then at the void ring on his hand. It was as if some kind of resonance had occurred between the two. The gravitational singularity created by the black hole Megatama seemed to have activated the gravitational control capability of the Void Ring. Their powers were mutually attractive, a mysterious feeling that even Fang Mo himself couldn't clearly explain. But in a daze, he felt as if he could control this power. So he tentatively closed his eyes. The Void Ring instantly emitted a burst of intense purple light, followed by numerous purple-black, arc-like gravitational rays erupting from him, crushing all tangible matter around him into dust. Very quickly, the black sphere stopped expanding and then vanished in an instant. Fang Mo opened his eyes and tentatively swung the simply heavy sword in his hand. The great sword, which originally felt as heavy as stars, was now effortlessly swung by Fang Mo, as if it wasn't a simply heavy sword but lay of a teen dot or perhaps a cleaving blade. Success. Seeing this, Fang Mo immediately showed an excited expression. He had been about to give up, but unexpectedly, after testing the black hole Megatama, he stumbled upon the correct method. This was truly exhilarating. The method was actually quite simple. It involved using the mass and gravitational field of the simply heavy sword itself to propel it. Once activated, the black hole Megatama on the simply heavy sword grants it abilities similar to a void ring, allowing it to affect the surrounding gravitational field to some extent, creating gravitational singularities, crushing everything around it, and so on. By using the Void Ring, Fang Mo can convert this power into a thrust, thereby achieving the effect of swinging the sword. This is somewhat similar to Fang Mo activating Leavitin using the Ring of Arcana. However, for the simply heavy sword, activating it requires the power of the Void Ring. When both the black hole Megatama and the Void Ring are activated simultaneously, the Great Sword not only possesses incredible density and mass but also amplifies Fang Mo's control over gravity. With a single thought from Fang Mo, the simply heavy sword in his hand suddenly quivered. Its originally dark blade became even deeper, as if it could devour light, looking like a strangely shaped black hole at first glance, a torn spatial rift. The Megatama of the bamboo module is so strong. Inspecting the simply heavy sword in his hand, Fang Mo couldn't help but sigh, even though it's just a decorative module, the means of world destruction keep piling up. What was the author thinking? Shaking his head, Fang Mo realized that he had underestimated the strength of the Megatama. He now knew how strong the black hole Megatama was. What about the other Megatamas thinking about this? Fang Mo directly took out the storm battle axe and the time stop sword, and simply tested them out. The power of the Storm Axe is originally not weaker than Leavitin. Crafted by Fang Mo, this thing is even more terrifying than Thor's Storm Axe, possessing the ability to change the climate in a small area and generate storms and thunder.
but if you activate the rain and thunder talisman, the Evertide amulet, and the ring of arcana at the same time, the strength of this thing will be elevated to an absurd level. Fang Ammo thinks this thing shouldn't be called the Storm Axe. It should be called a damn weather control machine. Apart from the Storm Axe, the Time Stop Sword is also strong. Fang Ammo casually tried it out and found that it could at least stop time for a few minutes, completely different from the tens of seconds mentioned in the Tinker Construct Guidebook. He doesn't know whether it's due to its materialization or some other reason. Stopping time for a few minutes. Good lord, one sword is equivalent to more than 20 Zawaridos. Fortunately, Fang Ammo has good endurance in this area, otherwise, a fast shooter would have had enough time to wrap things up. Unfortunately, Unlike Leavitin, Rahab, or the simply heavy sword, while the ability of the time stop sword is perverse, Fang Ammo hasn't found any creature that can be sealed into the sword as a battery. If he could go to the DND world, he'd like to capture a time dragon or something. But for now, it seems he can only persecute Dio, as it appears that in the Jojo world, only Dio Brando stand can stop time. What you mentioned, Star Platinum Jotaro stand ability is clearly just a tape recorder. However, D.I.O. Brando's stand ability is a bit weak, it can only stop time for tens of seconds at most. This is the real world, not the anime world. You can't extend time stoppage by narrating passionately, what can you do in just tens of seconds the moment he took it out, time started flowing again. Isn't this just playing dirty thinking of this, Fang Mo also sighed helplessly, ah, I don't know when I will be able to get the watch of flowing time. Chapter 238 after testing the Storm Axe and the Time Stop Sword, Fang Ammo also planned to go back. With a slight thought in his mind. He directly used brown magic to teleport back into the villa. Testing these weapons took up quite a bit of his time, and it was already completely dark outside. As he had mentioned before, the current year was 1868, and nightlife in Europe at that time was far less rich than it is now. Many people were already resting at this time. But Fang Ammo couldn't sleep at all. In fact, after his body was digitized, he had lost the ability to dream. Except for the time he spent with the X-Men. After all, the ability of the White Queen Emma was quite useful. Sigh. Bored, he sighed, and summoned Ashwe back. Master. Ashwe, dressed in a white kimono, slowly appeared. She quickly noticed Fang Mo's expression and asked with slight confusion, Master. What's wrong? Do you know the three great miseries of life? Fang Ammo asked. The three great miseries of life Ashwa tilted her head and asked, What is that? Toothache, constipation, insomnia. Fang Mo rubbed his temples and explained, Of course, there are now new three great miseries, which are working 996, being cyberbullied to social death, and having your gaming skills nerfed. And right now, I am experiencing one of them, insomnia. Insomnia what should we do? Upon hearing this, Ashwe also began to think of solutions. She lowered her head to think for a moment and said, Then. Should I help you warm the bed? Let's not. Fang Emma with a sad face said, This really isn't what I had in mind. Sorry, master. Ashwe lowered her head, feeling somewhat guilty. It's alright, I'm not blaming you. Fang Emma smiled and then waved his hand at her. All right, don't think too much. Go make me a cup of tea. Okay, sure. Ashwe nodded and then walked toward the kitchen. She had already been exposed to modern appliances when she was in the world of bleach, so making a pot of tea wasn't difficult for her. Very quickly, Ashwe boiled a pot of spring water. However, because Tony Stark didn't like tea, he hadn't prepared any tea for the villa. There were only two packs of portable black tea in the cabinet. Ashwe didn't overthink it and just brewed a pot. After a moment, she also took some pastries from the refrigerator, put them on a plate, and carried them over. Master, is black tea all right? Ashwe said as she placed the tray on the coffee table. The corner of Fang Mo's eye twitched slightly, but looking at Ashwe's hopeful eyes, he didn't refuse. Well. It's fine. Drinking this will help me sleep well. After saying that, Fang Ammo picked up the teacup and took a sip. The light aroma of the tea, accompanied by a hint of refreshing astringency, gradually spread throughout his mouth. 
Actually, Fang Emma wasn't very good at appreciating tea. However, having a hot drink late at night felt pretty good. So he squinted his eyes, taking sips of black tea intermittently. His thoughts gradually dispersed and drifted away. Since awakening his stand until now, upon careful thought, it seemed like quite a lot of time had passed. During this period, Fang Emma was indeed learning and growing. Initially, he was even too lazy to study his workbench, frequently losing his temper. However, at some point, his restless heart began to settle down. He became more patient and even started using exhaustive methods to experiment, creating some machinery and crystal matrix ingots by hand. Even in terms of his mental state, Fang Emma was constantly trying to change himself. For this reason, he created his servant Ashwe, as well as a pet ender dragon he raised like a daughter. With their companionship, Fang Emma found that his mental state had indeed changed somewhat. But that doesn't mean he no longer misses home. He still occasionally thinks about the past. Perhaps it's when he sees a certain scene, or perhaps it's on a quiet night, Fang Emma feels that those long dead memories are beginning to attack him. However, Fang Emma doesn't dislike this. On the contrary, he enjoys recalling those yesterdays that seem like a lifetime ago. The best times are always particularly short, as if everything should be like that, but he still remembers all those touching moments. Although Fang Emma is aware that returning to his original world and reuniting with his family would be very difficult, he still wants to try. Collecting wish machines from every world has become his primary motivation, who knows, one might actually work by the way, Ashwe. After taking a sip of tea, Fang Emma suddenly turned to Ashwe and instructed her, go to the Joestar residence tomorrow. They have many maids and butlers, you can learn about this field from them. I understand, master. Ashwe had no objections, nodding her head and saying, I will work hard to learn, please rest assured. I really want to get that stand arrow soon. Fang Emo played with the Ender Dragon and looked out at the starry sky. Soon, the night had passed. After dawn, Fang Emo briefly washed up, ate breakfast, and then led Ashwe to the Joestar residence. After exchanging a few pleasantries, George Joestar readily agreed to Fang Mo's request. It's just about learning how to be a butler, that's simple, just let my old butler teach you. So, for the following period, Ashwe activated learning mode. She spent her days at the Joestar residence learning how to be a butler and gaining some real-world common sense, gradually improving her personality. In the evening, she returned to the mountain villa, took care of the household chores, and then rested. During this period, Fang Emo also performed a baptism for George's son, Jonathan. He took this matter quite seriously, even the water used for the baptism is from a real holy spring. He even changed into a priest's outfit, not intending to create a scene or anything. After baptizing Jonathan, Fang Emo spent a few days redecorating his villa. He planted a cherry blossom tree from the MC world in his yard and placed some decorative items from the bamboo and cherry blossom mod. He also repaired the large hole created by the cosmic meatball. However, while Fang Emo was decorating the villa, he suddenly found a geocist in his storage space. The geocist contained a dusk time tree that he had planted using a time seedling while he was in the bleach world. It had the magical power to influence the speed of time. Hmm. Thinking about this, a bizarre idea popped into Fang Mo's mind. Time tree, tree. Fang Mo pondered, stroking his chin, and started considering this outrageous question, trees. Plants, these plants are also a form of life, right can the time tree be sealed by the sword? Thinking of this, Fang Emma was a bit tempted. In theory, the tailed beasts are also a part of the Ten Tails Divine Tree. Since he had sealed the Nine Tails, does this mean that resonating end power can actually seal plants once decided, he acted immediately. Fang Emma immediately took out the geocist. He placed the box on the ground, and in the blink of an eye, the magnificent time tree stood before him. Fang Emo drew an end sword from within himself and thrust the blade into the trunk of the time tree. Just as Fang Emo had expected, the gentleman trait on the end sword activated. The time tree started to visibly distort at a rapid speed, as if forming a vortex. All its branches, leaves, root systems, and trunk were absorbed by the end sword in a spiral pattern. Yes. 
Seeing that the end sword successfully absorbed the time tree, Fang Ammo excitedly snapped his fingers. In the MC world, whether it's the gentleman or other mod capture balls, they can only capture entities like skeletons, villagers, or cows and horses, not trees. But this is not the MC world, this is the real world. Fang Ammo guessed that due to world rules or some logical reason, trees have been considered as life entities and can thus be captured by the end sword. Unfortunately, Fang Mo's time stop sword is just an experimental item. When making it, Fang Ammo casually used some bronze and iron, and randomly embedded a Mega Tama for enhancement. To create a truly meaningful time sword, Fang Ammo still needs to return to the MC world. M. After briefly pondering, Fang Ammo quickly made up his mind. This time he had indeed come a bit early. Rather than waiting here like a fool for the plot to unfold, he might as well take this opportunity to go back to the Minecraft world, just like he had done during his first battle in X-Men, to bring out some 18-year-old shit. Time to start speeding up. With that thought, Fang Ammo specifically called Ashwe back. He didn't plan to bring the Snow Queen along this time. After all, her understanding of human common sense was still too lacking, so it would be better to leave her here to slowly learn some human knowledge, she could also help him clean the villa and look after the little ender dragon, etc. After instructing Ashwe, Fang Ammo immediately returned to the Minecraft world and started crafting a real time stop sword. Actually, Fang Ammo originally wanted to make the Staff of Time. The mod Tinker construct added a weapon called the Staff to the game. However, after weighing the meanings of the words Staff Crafting and Sword Selling, Fang Ammo decisively chose the latter. He used crystal matrices, black meteorite iron, and urus to create a huge sword. Engraving Ender Metal, Strengthening, and Enchanting were all old routines, there was no need to elaborate further. Afterwards, Fang Ammo specifically farmed a round of villager avengers. And re-obtained a time stop gem. Upon embedding the gem in the weapon, Fang Ammo quickly returned to the Jojo world. Accompanying the endless dispersing black mist. Fang Ammo opened his eyes and began observing the surrounding environment. This place looked like a coal mine. Looking around, it was pitch black coal everywhere. Sporadic oil lamps and wooden frames. Besides, there were many people with similar colors to coal, half naked, holding burlap bags and tattered baskets, looking at him in astonishment as if they had seen a ghost. Not far behind them was a fat white man holding a whip. What the hell? Seeing the scene before him, Fang Ammo was instantly dumbfounded. He immediately thought of his first trip to the X-Men's first battle, the same startling beginning, and the same crowd of pitiable people looking at him in astonishment. What is this ominous premonition about? Fang Ammo couldn't help but touch his forehead, for some reason a bad feeling suddenly appeared in his heart. Without thinking too much, Fang Ammo immediately activated the effect of brown magic. A flash of white light, and he was back in his villa. Phew, that's much better. After returning to his own villa, Fang Ammo finally took a deep breath. After calming down a bit, Fang Ammo stood up directly from the sofa and began observing the surrounding furniture and environment. The villa that Stark had built for him was brand new. However, at this moment, although the place is usually well maintained, Fang Ammo could still see a faint trace of the passage of time here. Hmm. Fang Ammo glanced at the wear and tear of the furniture and had a general idea in his mind, I see, it seems like my time skip has fast forwarded another 10 years. I am willing to call myself a benevolent shit god. He mumbled to himself. Fang Ammo then slowly opened the door and walked out. In the courtyard, the cherry blossom tree had already grown large enough to be embraced by several people. As for the lounge chairs and doghouse that were previously placed in the yard, they had all disappeared. Perhaps they were damaged from being too old. Fang Ammo walked out of the courtyard and stood on the cliff at the mountain top, looking down, in the distance, the Joestar estate was still standing there. Hmm. The Joestar mansion is still there. Seeing this, Fang Ammo was somewhat relieved. In the original story, Dio Brando had quickly burned down this mansion after becoming a vampire. Since the mansion is still intact, it means the plot hasn't progressed too far. He didn't he rush to study the Sword of Time. Fang Ammo thought for a moment and decided to go directly to the Joestar mansion at the foot of the mountain. It was probably morning now. 
the servants in the Jostar estate were busy working. Gardeners were tending to the lawn, maids were washing and drying clothes, and some were helping the chef transport ingredients. Overall, it looked pretty busy. In the midst of this, Fang Mo also found a familiar figure. It was the Snow Queen Ashwe he had summoned. At this moment, she was dressed in a traditional maid outfit, standing near a fountain, and was sternly criticizing a burly blue-haired young man. Not wanting to waste words, Fang Mo teleported over. Jojo. How many times have I told you to keep your handkerchief properly in your pocket I can't even remember how many times I've found it in a mud puddle. Do you have a grudge against it if I find out you've lost it again next time, you'll be washing your mouth with muddy water. However, Ashwe had only gotten halfway through her sentence when she suddenly saw Fang Mo appear. She was stunned on the spot, as if struck by lightning. Unlike Ashwe, the blue-haired young man beside her showed an incredulous expression upon seeing this. His eyes widened as he said, How? How did this person suddenly appear here? Don't panic, kid. Fang Mo gave the blue-haired young man a smile, This is called teleportation. Your Joestar family has this ability too, but you can only use it once in a lifetime. What? The blue-haired young man was even more confused after hearing this, Teleportation our family what? What are you talking about? Ah, the naive child of the landlord's family. Fang Mo looked at the blue-haired young man, Jojo, Jonathan Joestar, and couldn't help but sigh. Ah, what a straightforward and lovely gentleman's spirit. Too bad it went astray starting from the second Joestar. Just as he finished speaking, a figure suddenly rushed into his arms, tightly hugging Fang Mo. Hmm. Fang Mo looked down and found that it was Ashwe who was hugging him. Master. Ashwe buried her head deep in Fang Mo's chest, her shoulders seemed to be slightly trembling. However, she soon took a deep breath, lifted her head, and her eyes, slightly red, smiled and curved up, forcing out a somewhat heartbreaking smile, Ashwe has learned everything now, next time. Take Ashwe with you. You've worked hard. Fang Mo patted Ashwe's head and smiled, yes, I will next time. Ashwe has changed a lot, not just in temperament and knowledge, but even some of her inner qualities have changed. Fang Mo couldn't quite put his finger on what it was, but clearly, compared to the emotionless Snow Queen she was at the start, the Ashwe now seemed more human. In Fang Mo's view, it was just a moment, but Ashwe had already grown for 12 years here. To be honest, this strange sense of disjunction made Fang Mo a bit uncomfortable. It seemed that he should indeed take her with him next time. However, before Fang Mo and Ashwe could say much more, Jonathan Joestar suddenly reacted. He looked at Fang Mo incredulously and exclaimed, Wait. You are Ashwe's master then. Could you be the mage that my father mentioned? Are you the Mr. Steve who performed the baptism in my childhood? Chapter 239 You're the Mr. Steve who baptized me in my childhood. Jonathan looked at Fang Mo with an incredulous expression on his face. Although he had never seen him in person before, he had always heard about him. It was said that he was a mysterious wizard. This was something both his father and sister Ashwe were very certain of. Being a child of his age, he naturally had a fascination with magic. He couldn't help but ask, Mr. Steve, will you dot teach me magic? You don't even want to call me Godfather. Fang Mo glanced at Jonathan and then uttered that classic line. Ha Jonathan was momentarily stunned, but then he bowed his head in shame and said, I apologize. I should call you Godfather. What a good kid. Fang Mo also started to smile, finding the boy to be quite straightforward. He then reached out to pat Jonathan's head but hesitated halfway, realizing that the boy's physique was so robust that he looked like a bear. Is this what a 12-year-old looks like after a slight hesitation, Fang Mo patted him on the shoulder instead. Then he took out a large piece of steak from his bosom. Here, a gift for our meeting. Fang Mo handed the steak to Jonathan, take this to the kitchen and let your dad know I'm back. Let's have dinner together tonight if he's free. I understand. Seeing Fang Mo's magical ability to conjure items out of thin air, Jonathan was immediately thrilled. His godfather was actually a wizard, which was absolutely amazing. He quickly took the steak and ran towards the kitchen. After Jonathan left, only Ashwe and Fang Mo remained in the room. Ashwe didn't say much, 
standing quietly by the side. However, her gaze never left Fang Mo. Fang Mo also took the time to observe Ashwe. Her appearance had not changed at all. Although she had switched from a white kimono to a maid's outfit, she still looked like a young girl. Her fair skin, amber circular eyes, and long, water blue hair tied into a high ponytail made her look even more vibrant. However, apart from appearances, Fang Mo felt many complex emotions from the other person's gaze. It seems that after so many years of experience, the other person has developed something akin to a heart, completing the transformation from a monster into a human being. Have you been staying in the Joestar family all these years after thinking for a moment, Fang Mo decided to be the first to break the silence. Yes. Ashwe nodded her head softly and said, Initially, I just wanted to learn about being a butler, but later it turned into waiting for the master to return. Over the years, I have been asking Mr. Joestar to help me buy books so that I could learn about the world. It shows, you've changed quite a bit. Fang Emo smiled and gently patted Ashwe's head. The feeling was like touching icy, silky satin, surprisingly pleasant to the touch, and Ashwe seemed to enjoy it, squinting her eyes. By the way, where is my daughter? Fang Emo asked, I didn't seem to see her in the villa earlier. Uh, about her. Upon mentioning the little ender dragon, Ashwe's expression suddenly became a bit subtle. What happened? Fang Emo noticed Ashwe's expression and was also a bit puzzled, did she sneak out to play or did she cause some trouble surely nothing bad happened. Nothing bad has happened. Ashwe shook her head, then spoke with a somewhat strange expression, however, she has changed quite a bit over the years. Master, you should be prepared mentally. Changed quite a bit. Fang Emo was stunned when he heard this, how big could it be it can't possibly grow several more, right? Cough, cough, cough. Ashwe's face suddenly turned red when she heard this, Master, what are you talking about no matter how it changes, its gender can't change. What I mean is, it has run away from home now. If you want to see it, I can take you there. Run away from home. Hearing Ashwe say this, Fang Mo also became a bit curious about what exactly happened to the Ender Dragon. He waved his hand and said, Let's go then take me to see her first. I'll go say hello to them. Ashwe nodded her head and then turned to walk towards the other servants. After briefly speaking to them, Fang Emo observed that this group of people was very polite to Ashwe, probably because they knew her status was different. Not long after, Ashwe returned to Fang Mo's side. Let's go, master. Ashwe pointed in a direction, the place is quite far, we need to find a deserted area and then fly directly there. Soon enough, the two left the Joestar Manor. Ashwe chose a deserted hillside and then activated her ice magic. A complex blue magic circle lit up beneath her feet. Ashwe then conjured a large block of ice. She walked onto it first and even took out a mat from somewhere. Laying the mat on the ice block, Ashwe looked at Fang Emma with a smile, Master, now you won't slip. Can we not talk about slipping? Fang Emma wiped his face. Seeing this, Ashwe also covered her mouth and left. Completely different from her previous fear and guilt, she even started to tease Fang Emo, It's okay, master, I've been making ginger tea for 12 years and am now very skilled. Why are you so skilled? Fang Emo couldn't help but say. In the midst of their playful banter, the ice block on the ground quickly rose into the air. Ashwe lightly tapped her fingertips and performed another unknown ice magic. Many tiny ice mirrors appeared in the air around her, distorting the refraction of the surrounding light, achieving an effect similar to optical invisibility. Fang Emma watched all this and had to admit that the sky had indeed grown a lot. The ice block flew at high speed in mid-air for more than half an hour. During this time, Fang Emma had been chatting with Ashwe about daily life. The mountains below gradually turned into flat land, then into the ocean, and finally stopped on an island. Fang Emo looked down and found that this should be a small island in the Atlantic Ocean, with nothing but a forest and a large cave in the center of the island. Looking down from mid-air, Fang Emo could vaguely see a purple-black creature lurking in the cave. Wow, it really did run away from home. Seeing this scene, Fang Emo didn't know what to say. Could it be that Ender Dragons also have something like a teenage rebellious phase I've never heard of this before. In any case, 
under Ashwe's operation, the ice block quickly landed in the center of the island. Fang Amo finally saw his little daughter. Or should I say? She's already a big daughter now. Looking at the Ender Dragon, which was currently napping in the cave, Fang Amo was completely stunned. The Ender Dragon now is no longer the size of an Urha dog breed. This thing now looks like a sleeping bus, just its snoring alone is causing the cave to tremble constantly. Fang Amo observed it briefly and found that this thing has grown really fast. Just the claws alone are like steel knives, the original fine dark purple diamond scales have turned into palm-sized ones, extending from the lower jaw all the way to the belly, then to the tail tip of the shiny silver heart shell, which has become even brighter, full of a metallic texture. As for the curved dragon horns on the head, they are almost thicker than an adult's thigh. The shiny silver spines on its back have become more ferocious, the wings have become wider and more powerful. The cuteness it had when it was small has all disappeared, replaced by a kind of cruelty, dominance, filled with a king-like temperament. But besides that, for some reason, it has a lot of things piled underneath it. Fang Amo looked and found that most of these things are gold and silver coins, and in addition, there are a large amount of glass, plastic, stainless steel basins, armor fragments, wires, bones and the like. And it is just sitting in this pile of junk, drooling as it sleeps. Chapter 240 Ah, this. Seeing the mess of a dragon's nest, Fang Amo was shocked once again. I told you, master, you need to be mentally prepared, Ashwe beside him said helplessly. It's like this now, and it won't listen to me. I'm also afraid that if a fight breaks out, others will discover it. What a mess, I'm drooling. Fang Amo looked at the Ender Dragon snoring loudly in the nest and really couldn't hold back anymore. Where had the little darling who called him dad in his arms gone what is this thing in front of him that's like a DND dragon thinking about this, Fang Emo suddenly became furious. So he walked up directly, and kicked the Ender Dragon's rear end. With a loud boom, the Ender Dragon's body floated briefly in the air before crashing heavily back into the nest, making a tremendous noise. The weight of the Ender Dragon was quite substantial now. This light impact had immediately crushed a lot of stainless steel basins in the nest, and even many gold coins were flattened, creating a large dragon-shaped pit. Suddenly being kicked, the Ender Dragon also woke up in a daze. Initially, it was a bit angry and planned to unleash a dragon's breath on this intruder. But upon taking a closer look, it found that the person standing in front of it was none other than its long-missed mother. Even though mom seemed a bit angry right now. But the Ender Dragon didn't notice that at all and immediately became excited. Mom. The Ender Dragon let out an excited roar, and its massive body rushed toward Fang Emo, its head as big as a car aiming directly for Fang Mo's chest, seemingly wanting to nuzzle. However, Fang Emo was angry at the moment. Of course, he wasn't going to let the other party act spoiled. So he raised his hand to block, easily pushing the dragon's head to the side. However, the Ender Dragon still hadn't come to its senses, it was still very excited, and its huge tail began to wag like an electric fan, brutally sweeping down a large swath of trees. Mom. Mom is back. The Ender Dragon let out two happy roars, and then as if remembering something, it twisted its body and burrowed back into its nest. Its front claws furiously dug through the pile of gold coins, and quickly unearthed a skeleton. After seeing the skeleton, the Ender Dragon immediately became excited. It opened its mouth to pick up the skeleton, carefully placing it in front of Fang Emo, and then stood a little distance away with its chest puffed out, as if seeking praise. You are. Upon seeing this, Fang Emo felt overwhelmed. Almost instinctively, Fang Emo wanted to scold it. However, just as he was about to open his mouth, he suddenly noticed a necklace around the skeleton's neck. It was a silver pendant that looked quite exquisite. The pendant was inlaid with a flawless, gorgeous red gem, and there were some other gems as decorations on both sides. What a beautiful pendant. Ashwe also commented in surprise after seeing the necklace. However, unlike Ashwe, Fang Emma was not pleased at all upon seeing the necklace. Instead, he couldn't help but exclaim, Holy shit! Ether Redstone. It's beautiful, this one. The Ender Dragon, of course, had no idea what Ether Redstone was. At the moment, the young dragon was still unaware of the gravity of the situation, 
and was just happily wagging its tail, I like it, but I want to give it to mom more. Damn it, that's enough. However, Fang Emma was not happy at all and began to massage his temples in frustration. Mom, don't you like it? Upon seeing Fang Mo's action, the Ender Dragon only then realized something was wrong. Its excitement slowly turned into confusion, it's beautiful, why doesn't mom like it? I'm asking you, where did you find this thing? Fang Emo asked directly. Stole it, the Ender Dragon honestly replied, from a faraway place. Where? Fang Emo asked. I don't know, the Ender Dragon shook its head. It's far, high up, and there's a lot of snow. Damn, really? Fang Emo slapped his forehead. This is hilarious. Did this stupid dragon just wipe out all those ripple messengers to avoid affecting the subsequent plot, he had specifically gone back to take a dump, but he hadn't expected that the ender dragon would go ahead and do everything that needed to be done. If even Zeppeli was killed by dragon breath, wouldn't the story of Jojo end before it even began is this the power of fate in the world of Jojo it's really headache inducing. Mom, did I dot do something wrong? At this point, even the ender dragon, who wasn't good at reading social cues, noticed that it seemed to have caused trouble. It cautiously asked, Why? You've done too many damn things wrong. Fang Emo sighed and put his hand on his forehead. I feel like you've been a waste of training. Maybe go back and hatch another dragon egg with the question mark pickaxe. If there's a chance in the future, I'll just send you to the DND world and marry you off to some random dragon. Hearing what Fang Emo said, the Ender Dragon was also startled. Although it didn't quite understand some of the words, it could still sense the disappointment in its mother's tone. At this moment, it became anxious, Mom, I was wrong, please forgive me. You were wrong. Fang Emo looked at the Ender Dragon in front of him, still somewhat reluctant to be harsh. But educating a child had to be strict. So he directly applied the policy his own mother used on him when he was a kid, come on, you tell me, what did you do wrong? Hearing this, the Ender Dragon was also stunned. Yes. What did I do wrong? The Ender Dragon stealthily observed Fang Emo and then began to think. Seeing that mom was angry about the necklace, did it mean it had given the wrong gift? I gave the wrong gift. The Ender Dragon lowered its head and softly said, Mom doesn't like this beautiful thing. So, next time, I'll give mom a black female human like Ant Yuriwaki, but she's not allowed to turn into a cat. Before Fang Emo could respond, Ashwe on the side couldn't help but laugh out loud. UFC. Hearing this, Fang Emo was so angry he almost snorted. The problem is not here. Fang Emo couldn't help but shout, frightening the Ender Dragon into shivering, look at how dirty you are, look at this place, it's like a dog's den. People who know would say it's a dragon's nest, those who don't would think a bunch of female knights were caught by goblins for a party. Is this how I taught you where did you learn this lack of cleanliness? But. The ender dragon said grievously, Mom, I used to live in a dog's den. Hearing this, Fang Emma was also stunned for a moment. As for Ashwa next to him, she was thoroughly enjoying the drama, laughing uncontrollably. Oh really, learn to talk back, have you? Fang Emma feeling his face couldn't take it anymore especially after Ashwe's laugh, rolled up his sleeves and walked towards the Ender Dragon, it seems you've really grown, liking to talk back, ha looks like it's time to properly educate you.